Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is all the things we do leading up to mulching the garden. Uh, mulch can be a lot of different materials, and we'll talk about that in uh, just a minute. But it's some, we've got to get something down on top of the soil to hold in moisture and hopefully suppress weeds and uh, help uh, beneficial bacteria, beneficial fungi. Uh, stay cool during the summer, stay warm in the winter. Uh, there, there's uh, lots of lots of benefits of having a mulched bed, uh, but in order before I do it, before I spend the money and before, before I spend the time, I want to get some of my late winter projects done so that after the mulch goes down, we're putting as little foot traffic on the bed as possible because the d disturbances, anytime you're bringing soil to the top, you're probably bringing weed seeds to the top. So. Again, as soon as I put that mulch cap on, I kind of want to stay out of the beds. If you have planting to do and things like that, you have planting to do, that's life. Uh, but I'd like to get as much of this done as I can. One of the main things is pruning. We've been putting up a lot of pruning videos. Uh, I'll link a couple of them down below this video if you want to take a look from pruning you know, large shrubs and perennials and grasses and ground covers and all kinds of things. And uh, that's giving us some material that we can use as mulch. So let's take a look at a few different things that can be used as mulch. The finished mulch we're going to be using in a couple of weeks after we do some of these projects, uh, it's called triple shredded hardwood mulch. That's what it's called here. It might be double shredded hardwood or hardwood mulch or have some other name uh, where you are, but it's just a nice brown uh, material. Uh, hardwood bark material that's been ground a few times. It has some different sized material in it and it kind of locks down on itself uh, pretty well, prevents it from eroding as bad, puts a little bit of a seal uh, on the top again for hopefully weed suppression. We leave our leaves down in the winter time. We have a large oak on the back of the property back here and uh, it puts down a lot of leaves. A lot of people you know, might think this is unsightly through the winter. I just kind of like to you know, have the winter be the winter and there's a lot, this, th these leaves are dropping on the ground uh, for a reason. It's not like these trees figured out, you know, drop all their leaves for no reason. They do it to protect, uh, you know, protect the roots from the cold, protect our beneficial insects that, you know, bur uh, burrow down in the ground uh, in the winter time or live on the back of those leaves. Uh, they're just in general, a, it's like a barrier that the trees drop on the ground uh, to protect themselves in, in the forest floor and to refeed themselves their own nutrients. So they used that set of nutrients to build those leaves last year, to grow those leaves, and then it dropped those same nutrients back on the ground. So I don't want to take those nutrients and then rake them out to the street and let the city take them and then remulch at immediately. So we leave the leaves down. They're in the process of breaking down. In some places, though, they're too thick. Okay, and so I've got a spot like that right here where they're just too thick. We've got some small little dianthus and a little bitty conifer that we planted last year. There's a, a, a perennial uh, hookerella right here that's just kind of buried in leaves. So there are places back here before we mulch that I'll go through here, thin the leaves out some, and I'll put them in other beds that don't have any. Uh, so I'm not gonna get rid of them, but I kind of, any place that it's overly thick, um, I will redistribute them. So I'll leave the ground covered in leaves, but not a thick, thick layer. We started this project a couple of years ago. There's a playlist on the channel called New House, uh, and we very quickly uh, improved this soil, planted lots of shrubs, perennials, grasses, uh, annuals, all kinds of things that have been documented uh, through that series of videos uh, at this point, if you wanna go back and kind of watch to get us where we are today, which is kind of a messy late winter garden uh, that we will very, very quickly uh, uh, improve upon, but we're finally have some of our own material to mulch with. You know, that when you first plant a garden, you, there's not a lot of, you know, any pruning you're doing is a limb here and a limb there, and it doesn't produce any material that really helps you reduce the amount of mulching you're doing. Plus over time, the plants get bigger uh, and wider and you need less mulch in general. So we started out, I think the first time we mulched this with hardwood mulch, it was about 15, 16, cubic yards, and I think we'll be down to probably about seven uh, this time. Um, if I had to make a guess, again, the plants have gotten bigger, wider, plus I don't need as much because now I, I have the leaves and I have the other material that I'm about to show you. So any healthy material, we're cutting off a plant like this grass the other day that was in a uh, grass pruning video. This material just went down on the ground. The mulch will just go right over top of it later. Any perennial plant that has uh, thin, uh, that just has thin wood 
uh, like this salvia that was left over from last year. These are the types of things I'll prune. And again, as long as the material was healthy, uh, I'll prune them off and just tur uh, turn this into little bits, basically, right where it is. And so I'll, go I'll come through here and cut this thing off and just very quickly turn it into its own mulch. Again, these are the same nutrients it used last year, right, to, to grow this plant in the first place. And so I want to use it, you know, I just want to put it right back around itself. And then again, we'll neatly mulch over it later. So I'll just cut those into small bits. The bigger material, we cut back an abelia in the front garden in a video, uh, an abelia video this past week. And it, you know, has, uh, has limbs maybe up to about an inch uh, in diameter. And I've got a small electric chipper for that. Uh, this back here that I'm starting to do, I'm starting to chip all that material up. This stuff right here is like gold. And let me show you why. This is the material that comes from that chipper from these limbs. And it has, the reason this stuff's like gold is because it has all parts of the plant. It has the wood from the inside. It has the bark on the outside. It has these small little limbs. It has the leaves ground up in it. And because it has all parts of the plant, it is just the app, it's like jet fuel for your soil. And so again, this is a plant that used a set of nutrients to produce these stems and leaves and everything. And I don't want to dispose of it. So this nothing that gets cut off in this yard is going to get disposed of. Uh, I'll just, gr I'll grind the bigger material and just throw it out here and there throughout the garden. Any healthy material that I can cut up in place, that's just called chop and drop. You're chopping it down, cutting it into small bits, putting it right where it is, and then we'll put a decorative mulch over it so it looks, you know, uh, you know, looks finished and polished and that kind of thing later. But um, that's how we go about making, um, putting our, putting the nutrients that the plants are using during the growing season right back on their own roots. So we'll get the leaves respread out, get all of the pruning done, which I still have quite a bit of to do. Uh, the next step is to make sure you're as weed free as you possibly can be. And so this time of year in the winter, we can, sometimes the plants are thinner. We can see into them a little better. It's a good time to look around and see if there's any of these kind of woody. Uh, this is a ligustrum that had come up in the middle of a plant during the season last year and you couldn't see it. But at this time of year, it's easy to see and it's easy to pull. Uh, over here under this azalea, here's an ivy that it dropped from a seed back here uh, under the plant. And uh, you know, it'd be, it's easy to pull this first, first year it's in here. Uh, there's another, uh, another little ligustrum uh, next to it. I see one over here to my left. These little noxious weeds that are coming up, but they're easy to pull out of the ground right now, this time of year, they're easy to see. And I wanna get, again, this is a disturbance. You know, if I came through here and pulled this later, I'd be pulling soil up which again brings another, you know, probably brings more weed seeds up. Uh, so, you know, uh, I wanna do all this hand pulling first. We're filming this in February and a lot of the weeds that you might have are like chickweed and hen bit, some of our cool season uh, annual weeds and they can really take off and take over the garden very quickly. So I wanna get those out as much as possible. So as you can see uh, in the front turf area, all the, uh, all the things we've been pruning off of shrubs, that, all that stuff's gonna go through the, uh, the chipper and be applied to the garden, just a thin layer here and there before we do our, uh, do our final mulching. If you've got a big planting job you're doing in just one area of your garden, that might be a spot that you just, you don't, you don't mulch right now until after those plants have gone in the ground because planting is obviously the biggest disturbance of all, you know, bringing up, uh, bringing up soil. And uh, you know, those kind of projects look better when you put that cap of mulch on them after the things have gone in the ground. So you know, that might be something that uh, you would consider is just mulching everywhere except for a couple places where you're gonna be doing planting jobs. Another thing that we'll do here, we have a little bit of zoysia grass in the front garden and it tries to creep into the bed, you know, just like Bermuda, zoysia, centipede, these warm season grasses. So this time of year, I like to go through and just and, and cut them. I use this, this just little flat, uh, narrow shovel it's maybe it's maybe six inches wide it's got a flat blade on it it's got a good place to step on it uh, it's really quite good for creating a crisp edge and so i'll go through and and step it down in the ground i've got edging videos on the channel uh, and we've got uh, 
videos on creating new beds. And so one of the videos that'll be going up soon is I'm making the turf area in the back a little bit smaller and then it's going to become a patio later. But in the meantime, I am going to create some additional bed space. So that'll be an upcoming, an upcoming video, but we'll do any edging. And so again, we're talking about any basic disturbances uh, that we're doing. So when we're edging, I can take this material and just throw it right up in the bed like this. Uh, you know, I can go down and then again, just chunk this material up in the bed. The problem with that is it's got this zoysia grass in it. And so for me, I need to back cut it like this, just like that, and actually remove this. Uh, it'll end up on the, uh, on the compost pile in the back, but this is how I have to create an edge here. You see that zoysia grass is actually in that. Um, but you can see I can make, Okay, I'll just actually I'll pull it out here on the turf so you can see. But I can make a really crispy edge. It just I have to back cut it like that uh, in order to do it, in order to make sure this Bermuda is not going to, uh, or I mean, sorry, zoysia grass isn't going to uh, cause me a problem. Normally, I'd have a wheelbarrow here and not be throwing it out on the turf. But I'm just kind of showing you. I want to cut this trench edge. You can see I can make it nice and crispy like that using this. Uh, using this flat shovel, make pretty quick work of it. Good time of year to be doing it because the ground is moist and it's soft. And again, this material will just go onto the compost pile. This is, if I throw this, if I throw this up in the bed, uh, Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, it's gonna be growing out there. I have two giant bags of plant tone fertilizer uh, that I just got. And in the next week or so, you'll see a fertilizing video. This is one other thing I wanna do before I mulch. This organic fertilizer is number one, it's very appealing to the dogs and has an off odor. Uh, so those, those two reasons I wanna put it out and then immediately put mulch on top of it. So it's just kind of sealed away, but it'll also keep it from washing away. So there is an order of things here, just trying to do as many things as I can possibly do uh, to disturb the beds as little as possible after we mulch. A lot of what I do in early February is create uh, some pretty big messes, you know, from, from you know, these pruning jobs, edging jobs, uh, weeding jobs and uh, redistributing these leaves and, and all those kinds of things. It actually creates kind of a messy situation pre-mulching, but having taken care of these jobs, you know, before, before you do it again, will suppress some weeds that you'll have during a season, uh, you know, by not going back in there and just constantly disturbing, disturbing that space. And of course, reusing all of this material you know that from our from our trees and shrubs perennials grasses uh our annuals from last year all of this material none of it's leaving this is this garden is basically a closed loop uh almost a closed loop our plants aren't quite big enough a closed loop would mean that i'm able to fertile i'm able to mulch with with the material that we're cutting off our own plants and it's enough fertilizer i don't have to bring any outside fertilizer in i am going to be putting down a small amount of organic fertilizer and i am bringing in about seven yards of uh, a decorative kind of triple shredded hardwood mulch outside of that everything else that these plants are going to be fed this year is their own material we finally have plants large enough to give us some of that material to, to chip up and to cut up uh, one thing on that front, you know, I was showing that edging out front. I do have lots of edging videos that are much better than what I just showed you right then. But that little edge you're creating along the edge of the turf allows that mulch just to fall against the turf edge and it makes it look nice and crispy during the season. There are mechanical, you know, there are machines for trenching and I used, I had one as a landscaper. I hated pulling that thing around. It's the noisiest, most it's, 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 it's quite a machine, uh, but if you do have a lot of edging to do, you can rent uh, an edger for that. Uh, the other things that you could use for mulch, uh, again, the leaves are perfectly fine mulch, and you can take, if you have just excess piles of leaves, you can take them to your driveway and grind them up with a mower uh, and then and keep them, and for a second round of mulch to use in the spring as these older leaves are breaking down, uh, you can use any of the things you're cutting off the plants. You can, you know, you can chip them up. That a little electric chipper was on Amazon. It doesn't cut up very big material. I had a gas uh, chipper at the nursery and um, at the old house, a big one. It was in a video years ago. Um, so you can get bigger ones or rent bigger ones if you have larger, uh, larger material. Of course, you can use pine straw if you have pine trees. You know, the pine straw is perfectly fine as mulch. Wood chips, you know, arborist wood chips make great mulch. I wouldn't put down big, thick layers of arborist wood chips as your mulch on your existing plants. It can 
initially cause some problems with some plants while it starts to break down. Uh, but it is still still a great mulch, just a thinner a thinner application. And we use wood chips in our paths here, uh, which is a great material for creating paths and wooded spaces and that kind of thing. And you can get arborist wood chips from uh, I think it's uh, getwoodchips.org. Anyway, I'll put I'll put it on the screen. Whatever it is, but you can put your name. Hopefully, get free uh, wood chips to use uh, as well. So there's a lot of different things we can use as mulch. And I'm trying again at the end of the day. Uh, a lot of what this channel is about is trying to trying to save money, do things efficiently, but also improve our soil with our own existing, using our own existing material here uh, on site uh, to do that. So uh, we'll be mulching in about two weeks. There's some more pruning to videos that will go up and uh, several other things uh, along the way, including making some additional bed space back here and the prep for a, a patio that's going in back here. So thanks for following on.